Trudeau tries to trick Canadians into believing that he's made some concessions. Independent MP has come forward with an, one of the 11 names. Turns out all 11 are from Toronto. And two of the federal MPs demand that Canadians start to be more patriotic. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Justin Trudeau is trying to make everybody believe that he's all of a sudden become contrite because he's got people left and right telling him that he's got to go, that it's time for him to go. Even from inside of his own party, there's at least 30 members that are saying that he should be leaving. So last week he came out to say this. Today we're announcing that we will reduce the number of immigrants we bring in over the next three years. Of course, I told you all in September that this was going to happen with one year to go. He's going to all of a sudden try to convince you that He's changed his policies. He put all of this, all of these troubles upon us. He created all these issues. He told us all that we didn't know what we were talking about. If you disagreed with it, you were some sort of an ist, whether that be you, you were an anti-immigration uh, person, you were a nationalist, whether you, you know, it was always some sort of an ist that you were, that he was talking about. And now all of a sudden, because his polling numbers are bad, because his party's polling numbers are terrible, He's going to say to you, oh, well, we're, we've changed our position on immigration. But that's not the case. It, what he's really done is just tried to tell you what you want to hear, despite the fact that he knows. So you see, uh, in one hand, in one breath, he says, oh, I know that you are unhappy with the amount of lack of housing, the lack of jobs, and the immigration is too high. Then he says permanent residents. He doesn't say anything about students. He doesn't say anything about asylum seekers. He doesn't say anything about uh, the foreign workers program. There's lots of ways to, to shore up the numbers. And he's still bringing in more people than he is building houses. But he wants you to make this soundbite. That's why he puts them, uh, surrounded himself with all of these MPs, right? So they can all run back to their riding and say, no, 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 we've changed our immigration policy. And then he'll go in the House of Commons today and talk about how he's trying to densify the cities, how he's trying to do all of the things that he said. So he's not changing his mind. He's not even changing his policy. He's simply telling you what you want to hear so that you will, in, will get foolish enough to vote for him again. And if, of course, it's easy to expect that he will be doing more of this, that he's stalling and that he will tell you whatever you want to hear, wherever you go, wherever he goes, just like the Liberal Party is doing with the Middle East. If they go into one room, they support the Israeli, Israelites. If they go into another room, they support everybody else. So... I mean, it, it, it's just the same thing. If they go into one room, no, 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 we're going to support immigration. You go into another room, no, 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 we're going to have immigration stop. What they really need to do is start to just get out of the way so that those of us that are honest and have a, have a vision and a direction for what we're looking for in this country can get to work. Because right now all you're doing is keeping us stuck in one place. But he doesn't care. That's how progressive he is. He doesn't care what you're going through. Yesterday, a small group of men came before the cameras and they announced that they knew at least one name on the list for the 11 that are being compromised knowingly or unknowingly by the Chinese uh, communist government. And they announced that the trade minister, Mary Ng, is, is, has been a beneficiary of the inter interference from China. Who confirmed that Senator Wu, appointed by Justin Trudeau, was under CSIS investigation. According to three national security sources, Liberal Cabinet Minister Mary Ng was identified in CSIS investigations as one of 11 Toronto area candidates clandestinely supported by Chinese consulate and United Front influence networks in the 2019 election. Now, I didn't make it. I saw a couple of channels do stories about this and people were clickbaiting on it. But there wasn't much announced beyond that, right? The fact that she is a sitting cabinet member is something that Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party should be addressing, however. Any, any suspicion and the jacket should be removed from her and she should be put into the back benches until she can clear her name. Otherwise, what we're talking about is just India all over again, only with a different flag. It's just China now. And the Liberal government doesn't seem to be anywhere near as strict on China as they are on India. They're not talking to any of the 175 diplomats that they've got inside of the country. They're not talking about, you know, interference on people. And you got to believe that interference, no matter which co co country it's coming from, it involves intimidation. 
it involves terrifying you into thinking that you're they're going to somehow be able to stop you or harm you. They're not walking up and saying, here's 50 bucks, go vote for the, the way we want them to. They're walking up and saying a lot of things that if we were to take them and put them into other contexts would look like extortion or would look like flat out threats. They might use flowery language, but it's an implicit thing. When the government of a, of a country that you ran away from comes knocking at your door, obviously you're going to be intimidated. Obviously there's a, there's a disproportionate amount of, of power on one direction. Of course, the far left doesn't seem to care about that all of a sudden. I mean, any of it, you know, five dozen I, things that the liberals seem to go one way on one side of it. And, and when it's a different set of circumstances for the same example, they go a completely different direction, right? To say that it's fickle is not strong enough, I guess, now that I've had time to rethink about it. Either way, the individual that made this announcement was trying to talk about how he has written it down in his book, but I looked high and low for his book, and the third edition that he mentions doesn't seem to be quite available yet. He did, however, read quite a few passages from the book. And there was, you know, there's a, certainly an interest in believing that there are MPs that are being negatively or unduly influenced by any of a host of countries. I mean, the WEF proudly pronounces that they are, they influence half of the liberal cabinet. Penetrate the cabinets, Klaus Schwab says. Isn't that foreign interference? Certainly, their WF is not an elected body. Why do they have the right to run up and down the halls of power in Canada? So we can see that there's a lot to it. And the reason that I didn't jump all over that story is because of that. And because of the fact that he said that all these, he, he magically said 11 and they were all in Toronto, which wouldn't make any sense because they would also need influence in Vancouver and I mean, Toronto might give them some influence in in, in, in in Ottawa. Or is it that they also have other member, different MPs from Vancouver that may be represented in a, disproportionately in a different party in, in Parliament? I don't know. It's something to think about. But I wanted to cover it at least to, to give everybody my two cents on the matter. Do I think that the 11 names are going to spring forward because of this? Clearly not. Do I believe that I want the 11 names released? Absolutely. And do I believe that our government is being negatively influenced from foreign powers and they're happy about it? Yes, I do. I think that as a culture, as a, as a nation, we have to stop pretending that everybody is from somewhere else. That's how they're getting away with it. And I'll show you that I'm not the only one who thinks of that here in a second. Two of Canada's members of parliament neither of which is technically a liberal, had something to say about the, the China foreign interference and the Indian foreign interference. And I want you to have a listen to what they said. I think it's important to point out that if this happened in the United States, there would be a special prosecutor appointed immediately. And this government is dragging it out. Canadians should feel safe in Canada. Um, Canadians should be safe from extortions. Canadians should be safe from uh, murder. Uh, they should be safe and their families should be safe. We should be living in safe communities from, from threats of, of violence, uh, not just by anyone living here, but, but also from any foreign governments. Uh, I, I do also want to point out the fact that in the U.S., they went from allegations to arrests in one week, whereas under this prime minister, there was allegations and, and absolutely nothing happened after that. So these two ministers are both talking about how in the United States something would have happened, action would have taken place, there would have been no way that foreign foreign countries' agents would have been interfering in either the political system or the day-to-day -day living of people. Of course, we see how in Canada we had a lab leak and they did nothing about it for a year and a half. And in, in the United States of America, when they had a lab leak, they fired everybody. They sit kicking them out of the country in a heartbeat because they have, they care about it, right? They have a national identity. No matter where they are from, they care about America being first. Now I get that there's a lot of people on the far left right now that are trying to bring communism into the United States and they're trying to dismantle the system. But for the most part, People are patriotic because they believe in the country that they're living in. Even when they come from South Asia, or even when they come from Asia, or even when they come from the Middle East, there are very, it's a smaller and smaller number that don't try to take pride in where they're from. 
as a result, when they hear, when they get a whiff of foreign influence trying to swing votes or trying to threaten their citizens, they go into action. They do something about it to solidify the idea that they are a unit outside of those people. Now, in Canada, we have a very weak approach to that because the far left is in Canada trying to separate everybody into their individual groups, right? So we have, you know, this group and that group and that group and that group. And of course, the far left government is trying to tell you that only they can keep all of these groups happy and only they can keep all of these groups together unless it's a conservative and then they will turn those people into the enemy. The conservatives in, under the far left are just the modern day scapegoat they're just every time there's a problem it's all it's always the conservatives fault right oh we we gave 400 million dollars to our friends must have been something the conservatives did we paid 60 million dollars for a nap must have been something the conservatives did we we paid our air flight on the backs of the taxpayer conservatives probably did that we went to an island with our rich friends and gave them influence inside of the country that's most likely the conservatives and all of the people that are foolish enough to fall for it are the people that the far left scoops up and puts into their camp. And when you hear about people that are talking about foreign influence in, a, in the United States of America, they get called out on it because they have a patriot, they're patriot to their country, patriotic to the United States of America, whether they just got there or not. And yet in Canada, we seem to have this idea that we're all from somewhere else. Well, many of the individuals that come to Canada always want to identify with being from somewhere else. But this country is founded on people that were from somewhere else. There's a reason that in this country we have many of our halls of power do not permit people to sort of be boastful about their religion because it's a country founded on people with different religions. And we couldn't have those people tearing each other to shreds in this country. There seems to be an underlying abandonment of that common sense. It seems to be that people all want to identify as being from somewhere else. And if they don't have the ability to join in a group, then they all of a sudden that group becomes their enemy. We have many things in common, but nobody seems to want to celebrate that. Least of all, the federal liberal government. They want to separate you into every little camp so that they can put the string on you, put the chain on you, and just m manipulate everything that you do with a couple of words. Whether you be in the downtown core or whether you be in the suburbs, it's always just a couple of words and it sends people into a frenzy. And when they don't fall for that frenzy, the liberal government will, will come out and try to make you an empty promise, as in the example of the immigration levels. They don't have any interest in turning down anything. They don't have any interest in doing anything that they haven't been doing for nine years. If they did, if they cared, if they, they would have got out, out in front of this problem. But how many times have they stood in that microphone and said, it's not a big deal. You guys are overreacting. It's all a lie. It's all a conspiracy. If you're not part of our massive press conglomerate, you're not welcome in the building. We'll turn the RCMP on you. You think they'll turn, they'll turn the RCMP with the, with the newscaster on camera. Imagine what they'll do to you when nobody's looking. But you want to separate yourself into a group. And you give them all the ability to separate you, to take from you, to turn you into nothing but a little pawn in their game. These two ministers demanding that we we would we act more like America, they're missing one one key ingredient. We have to start identifying as Canadians first. Not by our religion, not by our G where our parents were born. Not by where our parents' parents were born. I mean, you got people, some people here that are third, fourth generation, and they still identify from the country where their great grandmother came from. That's ridiculous. And certainly, no way are we going to forge an identity if we keep telling ourselves that we have to be different from our neighbor, that we have to be different from the individual that we share the the lunch table with, that we that we share our schools with, that we share our workplace with. The one thing we have in common is the make belief that we're all Canadian. If you want to be from somewhere else, it begs the question what you're doing in Canada, especially a country that's in such terrible shape as it is. I believe that what these ministers overlook is the idea that they are a part of the concern, that they are identifying as being from somewhere else. It doesn't matter where you were. It matters only where you were raised, right? You're here now. If 
you're inside of this country, you need to be on a Canadian before anything else, before your religious affiliation, before your gender affiliation, before your genetic affiliation. You have to be Canadian first. And then you will find that that level of, of identity, that level of patriotism will manifest itself just like it does in every other country of the world. But we allow ourselves to be separated into clusters, clusters of people, instead of telling ourselves that we are first and foremost Canadian and then everything else is secondary. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.